Hi, this is Ted Lester. Welcome to my demo reel. Think of me when you're looking for someone to provide entertainment for your next sing-along, party, or show. Hope you enjoy it. And now, please welcome your Master of Ceremonies, Ted Lester. Hey, how's everybody doing today? Hey! And how about the rest of you? Are you all right, too? Okay. Now, we got such a low-budget show, I had to introduce myself back there. But I uh, want to thank you so much for coming to see our show, the Savannah USO Club show. And uh, we've got a lot for you this afternoon. And let's get started right now with Cindy Goldberg singing Sentimental Journey. Yeah. Folks, today we're going to be honoring the USO and all that it's done for service men and service women all over the world for well over 50 years. And we're going to be honoring one special person, one entertainer who has traveled more miles and has spent more time entertaining troops overseas than anybody else in history. This man celebrated in 1996 an amazing 60 years with NBC and has been one of the greatest entertainers in the history of show business. Yes, I'm talking about old Ski Knows himself. Yes, yeah, just the very sight of him could bring a smile to your lips. And his, and his golf game was nothing to write home about either. But he had a tremendous way with people, and I tell you, he could be so funny, so clever. Keep on talking. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Hope. Dancing girls on our air at Savannah USO Club show. Well, there's another real important part of the USO shows, and that was the comics. Some of the greatest comics in the world got their start in the USO, entertaining the troops. And I'd like to bring back, as my part of the show, I'd like to bring back one of those comics now. He recently passed away, uh, but uh, gonna live on for the next few minutes here. Please welcome Mr. Rodney Dangerfield. Hey, forget about it, forget about it. Hey, I can't get no respect. Hey, hey, well, at least we got a good crowd tonight. Hey, I could use a good crowd. Hey, because I recently looked at my family tree and found out I was the sap. <laughs> yeah, that's right, boy. <laughs> You're kidding me. Hey, 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 boy, I, I tell you, I come from a dumb family, too. Hey, my great great uncle, during the Civil War, he fought for the West. <laughs> hey, wow. Uh, going over these jokes here, all right. <laughs> yeah, hey, when I was born, boy, wasn't I an ugly kid. I was so ugly when I was born, the doctor slapped my mother. <laughs> That's how bad it was. Hey, and boy, did I have trouble as a kid. You know, I tried to play with the yo-yo, never came back. <laughs> hey, my parents used me as a poster boy for birth control, for God's sake. Hey, any time my old man wanted sex, my mother would show him a picture of me to discourage him. <laughs> Hey, I can't, I can't get no respect. Hey, even my cat. You know, I'd play in the sandbox as a kid, my cat kept covering me, covering me up. Hey. Hey, at one time, I, uh, when I started, first started to learn to walk, my old man tripped me. That's how bad I was. Yeah, I wanted to learn to do ice skating, right? Hey, forget about it. I wanted to ice skate, my old man said, why don't you wait until it's warmer? <laughs> What? what kind of a childhood that I had? Hey, forget about it. Because, hey, <laughs> you know, I mean, I tell you, I even got kidnapped as a kid. And my parents got a phone call and said, we want $5,000 or you're going to see your son again. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad that was. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad that was. Hey, and finally, you know, when I did get a date, boy, that was tough. One, one time I got a call and this girl says, hey, come on over. There's nobody home. I went over, there was nobody home. <laughs> and when I finally did get a woman to make love to me, <laughs> yeah, we're making love, she starts crying. I say, what's the matter? You gotta hate yourself in the morning? She says, no, I hate myself now. <laughs> hey. Well, folks, I gotta tell you, hey, listen, I 
I got married and everything changed. You know, my wife and I had 20 happy years, and then we met. <laughs> hey, well, no wife like that. Hey, forget about it. You're kidding me. <laughs> Ah, and then my wife, hey, you know, I was in the bar the other day, and a bartender comes over, over and I was kind of low thinking about my wife, and I, he says, well, you have, and I say, surprise me. So he showed me a naked picture of my wife. <laughs> Forget about it. You know, I'm coming home the other day, and I see a guy running down the street naked. I say, hey, what are you, what are you doing that for? He says, because you came home early. <laughs> Ah, ah. <laughs> Forget about it. Hey, just the other day, I come home, my wife is standing in the front door wearing a sexy negligee. Trouble is, she was coming home at the time. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, what a wife I got. You know, my wife will kiss the dog, but she won't drink out of the same glass as me. Yeah, yeah, hey, and our dog's no picnic either. I tell you, we call our dog Egypt, because he keeps living, leaving little pyramids all over the house. <laughs> Forget about it. What kind of a dog have I got? You know, his favorite bone is in my leg. <laughs> hey, forget about it. The other, the other day, he's, trying, he's standing at the door barking. He doesn't want to go out. He wants me to leave. <laughs> I can't get no respect from, from no one. Hey, you know, the other day I went to the dentist. I said, doctor, listen, my teeth are yellow. And he says, well, why don't you wear a brown necktie? <laughs> Forget about it. I can't get no respect. Just the other day, the Surgeon General offered me a cigarette. Hey! I went to a hooker, she told me she had a headache. <laughs> yeah, forget about it, forget about it. Yeah, it's tough. And my doctor, you know, my doctor, I can't know. Dr. Vinnie Boombots? Remember my doctor, Vinnie Boombots? Hey! I can't get no respect from him. The other day I said, Doctor, what's the matter with me? Every time I look in the mirror, I feel like throwing up. And the doctor says, well, I don't know what else is wrong with you, but your eyesight's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? I said to the doctor, I mean, I can't get no sympathy, neither. I said, Doctor, I was feeling low, so I took a whole bottle of sleeping pills. He says, well, why don't you have a few drinks and get some rest? <laughs> That's my doctor. I can't get no respect. You know, my doctor recently treated six cases. He had six cases of VD in his office. He's feeling better now. <laughs> hey, and I can't even get no respect for my kids. My, my kid was acting up, and I said, you know, someday you'll have kids of your own. And he says, so will you. <laughs> Hey, well listen, folks, that's enough out of me. Hey, forget about it. Forget about it. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Boy, great show, huh? You other folks enjoying yourselves? Bring the USO right to Savannah Club. But you know, I have a question for you folks. How many of you have ever been on a cruise? Oh, well, look at all those hands go up. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do. You know, what I like about the cruises is that you can eat and eat and eat. You know, they say you can eat 14 times a day if you're quick <laughs> on the ship. But you know, it's funny, I mean, when you get on the ship, sometimes things are very strange. Sometimes the people get disoriented. They don't know what they're doing or where, you know, what's going on because they're in a strange place. Like, for example, on my last cruise, this lady comes up to me and she says, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of lost here. Tell me, do these stairs go both up and down? <laughs> This actually happened, on the, happened to me on the Staten Dom recently. The lady came up to me the first night of the cruise and said, Excuse me, which elevators go down and which go up? And I said, These over here go down, ma'am, and these over here go up. And sure enough, they came that way a couple of seconds later. And she goes, Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, I was actually, I was on a bridge tour on the, on the ship once, and the guy was telling the staff captain, he said, You know, this ship is so large, and this little wheel is so small. Tell me, do you steer the entire ship from here? No, we just steer the front half from here, sir. And finally, uh, sometimes uh, you know, people get confused by all the beautiful colored lights. They see all these colored lights and all the lights in the cabins. And one guy asked me, tell me, does the ship have its own electrical power? 
Now we just plug an extension cord in Fort Lauderdale, <laughs> drag it all over the Caribbean. <laughs> okay. All right, well, folks, now it's time for some good old country music. Please bring up Shirley, Sonny, and Paul. That's right, step right this way, folks, and welcome. Now, the people that are in this room are all going to be eligible for a free prize, a great prize. So the other people who didn't come, they're going to be really disappointed. So I'm going to be giving away an absolutely free seven-night cruise brochure to anyone in this room. Joy, do you think we should uh, get started now? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Okay, let's go. All right, so as uh, you heard, I'm Ted Lester, and I'm going to be performing for you today. We're going to be doing uh, some uh, sing-along music, and we're going to be playing some old songs that I hope you know and remember and enjoy. So uh, let's just uh, let's just get started with it right now. Start off with my favorite song, it's called Five Foot Two. Terrace uh, in Santa Maria, and I've played at some of the other homes in the area. Uh, my motto is today Arroyo Grande, tomorrow Lompoc. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, but it's fun. I enjoy it a lot. I like to tell jokes. I'm uh, sort of known as king of all the rotten one-liners. So uh, it's uh, it, it's possible that uh, I may be telling some some uh, jokes here today. We'll have, uh, we'll have some uh, fun with that. And uh, we're gonna be uh, doing some sing-along. We uh, do something a little different here. Rather than passing out songbooks, what I do is I have the lyrics appear on this television set, where you can see my handsome face there. Uh, Ted Lester's fun time. So like I say, uh, when the lyrics pop up, I invite you to sing along uh, and uh, just to uh, have fun, and also I take requests. I, I'll do anything but stop playing, because I don't get paid if I stop playing, see? So I will play, but uh, uh, if you have any favorite songs or favorite artists or anything like that, you just, after a few songs, you just let me know, and uh, <clears throat> I'll see if I can uh, find them and play them, and then we'll, we'll uh, sing along here. Okay, well good. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll get started with the, uh, with the first couple of songs and then uh, take some requests from you. <laughs> First one is uh, Frank Sinatra, called Young and Hard. Fairy tales can come true, it can happen to you. If you're young and hard, The song that Bob Hope made famous called Thanks for the Memory. You remember this one? Thanks for the memory 
of candlelight and wine, castles on the Rhine, the Parthenon and moments on the Hudson River line. How lovely it was! Thanks for the memory of rainy afternoons, swing and Harlem tunes. And motor trips and burning lips and burning toast and prunes. I know about that. How lovely it was. Thanks for the memories. Okay. Old Bob Hope song. You guys remember old Bob Hope? Thank you. Here's a Matt Monroe tune. Very, very, one of my favorite singers. Real crooner. I'll see if I can croon. There could never be a portrait of my love for nobody who would paint a dream. Very nice. You will never see a portrait of my love. For miracle I'll never see. So as I say, folks, I do comedy, and one of my favorite comedians is Rodney Dangerfield. How many of you heard of Rodney Dangerfield? Of course. Yeah. I was sort of I think of that as kind of our kind of comedy, you know, the, the good old days when you when you got those really good stinging one-liners. That was a lot of fun. So I'd like to do a very short impression of Mr. Rodney Dangerfield. I don't have my tie with me, so I'm just going to turn around and turn back the other way. Hold on. Hey, forget about it. I have somebody doing Hey, I could use a good crowd. Hey, because uh, last night, you know, I looked at my family tree, found out I was the sap. That's right. <laughs> For my family tree, the sap on the tree. That's right. In fact, I come from a dumb family. You know, my great, great, great uncle, Mo Lester, during the Civil War, he fought for the West. That's how dumb he was. That's right. When I was born, I was so ugly, the doctor slapped my mother. That's, that's how bad it was. In fact, she had morning sickness after I was born. That's how bad that was. And when my old man wanted sex, she would show him a picture of me to discourage him. That's how bad it was. Here's that old gang who sang Heart of My Heart. Let's see. Heart of My Heart. I love that melody. Heart of My Heart brings back a memory. When we were kids on the corner of the street, we were rough and ready guys. But oh, how we could harmonize it. Dear friends, we're dearer than Too bad we had too hard yeah. I know what Tim would listen If once more I could listen To that game that sang Heart of my heart All right, good, let's sing along here Heart of my heart I love that melody Heart of my heart Brings back all memories When we were kids On the corner of the street We were rough and ready guys But oh, how we were I Out of my heart My friends were there with them too. That I'm proud to be American Well, at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the men who died and gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. I won't forget the man who died 
gave that right to me, and I'll better stand up next to you. So, like I said, I'm going to be doing some Irish jokes, but uh, I, uh, I met Joanne uh, in the, at the Elks Club there recently, and uh, I told her that I was in the uh, cruise business. I, I work with a travel agency, and we, we go on a lot of cruises, which a lot, how many of you folks have been on a, on a cruise uh, recently? All right, great. Great. Well, you can feel the excitement in this room. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. When people are on the ship, they get kind of disoriented and not quite sure uh, what's going on. Like, I was on one ship, and this lady comes to me, and she says, Excuse me, Ted, do these stairs go both up and down? <laughs> no, man. <laughs> it's a true story. I, I, I just got on a ship, a Holland America ship, and uh, the, I just come out of the elevator. And a lady came up to me and she said, excuse me, which of these elevators go up and which go down? <laughs> so I said, man, these over here go up and these go down. He said, oh, and then they came that way just by chance. He said, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking a tour of the bridge and uh, this guy says, uh, you know this ship? He says to the staff captain, he says, you know this ship is so big and this steering wheel is so small. Tell me, do you steer the entire ship from here? <laughs> That's here, just the front half. We, we have another steering wheel for the back half. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you get it? Yeah. <laughs> someone did. Someone translate for one group. But anyway, there's a, those are a few of those cruise jokes there. But uh, I'm, I'm also uh, going to attempt, even though I'm 100% Polish. And of course, remember, we're going to tell some ethnic jokes tonight. You know, So we're going to have to, like in the good old days, you know, before uh, everyone had to be quite so politically correct. So I'm going to attempt to tell Irish jokes with a Polish accent here. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Because, you know, the Irish are very inventive people. I know Audrey's from England, that's, that's uh, fairly close to Ireland, but I know the English and the Irish, they don't get along too well. Uh, but, like I said, the Irish are very inventive. You know, in fact, the Irish invented a new tea bag? Yeah, it's waterproof. So, <laughs> they're very inventive. And uh, Pat and Mike were playing bingo. How many of you like to play bingo? You enjoy playing bingo? Yeah, all right. Well, they were playing bingo. And the caller says, oh, 42. And Pat says, Michael, you got it. And then the caller says, I, 15. Pat says, Michael, you got that one too. Yeah. Then the caller says, B, 22. And Pat says, Michael, you got that one too. And Michael says, would you do your own? And he says, well, mine's full, so I'm helping you. Oh. <laughs> this is my wild Irish road. My wild to share with you guys 
because I do believe that, the, that humor is a lot of what this world needs. You know, I think, for example, of uh, my warm-up act here this morning. First of all, you have the, the uh, Padre here talking about uh, war in the Middle East and how it might be the end of the world. And then you have the big grand talking about death by nuclear radiation. So I can tell everybody's right in the mood with for, for a comedy act. So um, I'll tell you just a, a bit about myself here. I have been uh, involved with uh, uh, comedy and entertainment for quite a long time. My father was uh, in show business. He had a show business act, uh, had a musical novelty act back many years ago in the, uh, at the end of the period of vaudeville in this country. And uh, I had a chance to be backstage when he was performing and uh, <clears throat> just uh, had a chance to hear a lot of different MCs and comedians. It was really a good education. Must have been to you know, 10,000 different venues. And I, I've been called by other people <clears throat> king of all the rotten one-liners. That's on a good day, that's what I get uh, called. And um, I performed on cruise ships. I've been uh, on over 100 cruises, love to be on cruises. I work now with a uh, travel agency uh, or a travel consortium down in Southern California. And uh, I've also performed in, uh, at senior residences here, so, like uh, Santa Maria Terra. So I, uh, I'm all ready for you guys. I got my senior jokes uh, lined up in case nothing else works here at the end of this year. And um, uh, I've also uh, led improv comedy workshops. And we're going to be talking about improv comedy and basically a quick overview of different kinds of comedy here in, in just a few minutes. And I love to be funny. I just, I just enjoy being funny. And I guess my whole message here for you guys this morning is that there's a lot of positive power in just looking on the funny side of life and looking for opportunities to laugh, for opportunities to be funny, and opportunities to make other people laugh. It makes such a big difference. It doesn't have to take a long time, just a little zinger now and then, just developing a kind of basically humorous outlook on life can make a big, big difference to the way you, you feel and the way the day goes for you.